you know, rang very true to me because of the work that we did, um, Explore Mars did on the study two years ago now, I think, which is amazing, um, <laughs> where we asked the question, you know, are you confident that we will land humans on Mars by 2030 or in your lifetime? And it was a national poll, statistically significant, and both answers were, were over 70% or near 70%. So people believe we are going to Mars. They are confident we are going to Mars. So the, then the question was why? And what we found was that the older you got, the more you believe the reason to go to Mars was US leadership to uh, basically uh, science and to create, actually science was pretty, I will say one thing that was consistent about, um, across all age groups and income groups is that the value of the science and the knowledge was important to young people and, and older folks as well. But the Apollo generation wanted to, the, they see Mars exploration as the opportunity for continued U.S. leadership in science, the economy, and things that are important to us, even in terms of defense and diplomacy. The Mars generation, those born after 1980, those um, 34 and under or so, who are more most likely to see humans on Mars more than. Mm -hmm. That's not me. Right? Um, they uh, they see it quite differently, um, and Emily touched on this, which is what well, it. I care about Earth. Why is it that every science fiction film, no matter how good they are, and I was, I was a big fan of Interstellar, um, that we're always abandoning Earth to go to Mars or to another planet. It's Earth is gone. It's dead. It's, we've used it up. The resources are there. It's not a very good message to send to someone who's 25 years old that the reason why we have to go to Mars is because our Earth is going to die someday. They said, well, why don't we spend that money on saving Earth? So I think there's an opportunity for us, you can launch it during Earth Day, um, to connect the dots that exploring Mars is saving Earth. I can see t-shirts and bumper stickers and hashtags that say, explore Mars, save Earth. Mm -hmm. And all the connections that we're gonna learn about humanity and resource management and ourselves. And I think that, that that's what I would like to do, is see us, that value proposition to young people needs to be very different than it was in the past. Um, so that's, um, I don't know, do you want to comment on that? Sure. I just want to say that I, I really like that idea a lot, and I told Rich I could see this catching on substantially at college campuses as something that could go viral and people could really be a part of. And also, it was so easy when we were looking at which, which body to go to. The moon was the closest, so that was very general consensus. Everyone's like, go to the moon, because it's the closest. It's not enough to say, okay, go to Mars because it's like second closest, or, or we need a stronger argument now, and that's why I think something like this, showing that we're not abandoning Earth, we're becoming a multi-planetary race, is valuable. Also, from a practical point of view, the moon is like an island. Unless I bring stuff there, I won't have it. And of course, sure, it has some resources, but even the water on the moon, if I really want to bathe a lot, bring a lot of tea, I'm afraid that I need to bring my own water and a lot of other stuff. And Mars, on the other hand, has a lot of the stuff we need. And sure, it is not easy. It's not like I'm going to go to Mars, I'm just going to dig one meter deep and here's my, you know, water source. I mean, that's regrettably not the way it works. But there is a lot of water. We are already for years researching how to get to it. Yesterday at JPL I had a very good presentation on how to, you know, where they know the water is, what ideas there are to get to it and to make it usable for humans exploring Mars. So, you know, so that's that. And actually it, it harkens also back to, you know, this whole idea we go to an astronaut.